In his last major point of the series, Bodhi will toss out the old claim that there's more historical evidence for Jesus than for Julius Caesar. While this argument can sound compelling, or at least leave your head swimming, it takes advantage of lay audiences' unfamiliarity with historical methodology by grossly misrepresenting where our knowledge of history comes from, how certain we can be of it, and what historians expect from an ancient document. In other words, Vodi will once more show himself to be totally full of When we're talking about just the New Testament itself, there are over 6,000 manuscripts or portions of manuscripts for the New Testament itself. Now that may not sound like a lot to you, but can I compare it to a couple of things? Julius Caesar's Gallic Wars. That's how we know about Julius Caesar and his conquest. You may have already noticed this, but Vodi has a strategy of fudging on little details that sound unremarkable, but later end up proving vital to his argument. You don't always catch him doing this because he packs them into offhand sounding remarks that he rattles off so quickly and casually that they fly under the radar. If you remember, he did this in our last video by saying, Guess what? We can get earlier than AD 120 with some of the copies that we have thus making a sneaky implication that multiple New Testament manuscripts date back further than they actually do. Here he does it with his explanation of Caesar's Gallic Wars. Listen carefully to how he sums it up. Julius Caesar's Gallic Wars. That's how we know about Julius Caesar and his conquest. Now on the surface, this sounds like an innocent little aside, like he's just naming a book and giving a brief explanation of what it's about, right? But take a moment and think about how he worded this description. The book we call The Gallic Wars is an account written by Caesar about his conquest of the Germanic and Celtic tribes of Europe. That's all. But when Vodi describes it by saying, that's how we know about Julius Caesar and his conquests, he's implying that the Gallic Wars not only tells us about Caesar's entire life, but that it's our sole or at least main source of information about it. Because if the Gallic Wars is how we know about him, then we wouldn't know about him without it, right? This sounds like nitpicking but I think his wording is used to suggest an idea that Vodi is highly invested in, an idea that's central to his entire narrative of the role New Testament manuscripts play in history. See, the argument for Jesus' historicity only has a chance in a world in which history is passed down to us in neatly packaged narratives contained within individual documents or collections of documents. Of course, history doesn't work that way, not even by a long shot, but it behooves charlatans like Vodi to convince lay people that it does work that way. Since the Bible is just a book of narratives written by one culture, a fact that seriously hampers its credibility in the eyes of any serious historian, then what apologists need to do is suggest that all of history comes down to us from similar documents. Then it all just becomes a contest of which book is more credible, at which point apologists can reduce the measure of credibility down to things as crude as manuscript count and manuscript age. Now I took a while to explain this preliminary idea, but it's central to his entire claim that Jesus has better historical attestation than Caesar, as we'll see. We can get earlier than AD 120 with some of the copies that we have. When it comes to Julius Caesar's Gallic Wars, the earliest thing we can put our hands on was written 900 years after the original, but nobody's tearing down the walls in college because they're reading Caesar. Okay, so here we see Vodi reap the fruits of his suggestion that everything we know about Caesar came from his Gallic Wars writings. Suggesting that since a book about Caesar came later than a book about Jesus, then the book about Jesus wins the document contest, giving us better evidence for Jesus than for Caesar. But this ignores the fact that our knowledge of Caesar does not come from one book, especially one written to describe a specific set of military campaigns. Caesar's life is documented by several contemporary authors who lived under his rule. Not only that, but we have contemporary and consistent depictions of his face, along with a complex web of corroborating references and archaeological evidence, the real stuff of history, that leave us practically no doubt that somebody with his name and image ruled the Roman Empire. By contrast, all substantial records about Jesus' life are contained within one body of religious documents produced by his followers and written with the goal of promoting his worship. I'm brushing aside authors like Josephus and Tacitus, who, even in passages that aren't near certain forgeries, indicate awareness of the Christian movement more than of Christ himself. Whenever facts about him are mentioned, they sound like reiterations of Christian stories using phrasing drawn from within the Christian movement, and they lack sources, context, or any explanation for where the author got the information. On top of it all, they are extremely bare-bones, almost throwaway references. 
The fact is, historians cited by apologists are just window dressing used to satisfy believers with a vague thought that somebody outside the Bible was talking about Jesus. And every substantial reference to Christ that is even claimed by Christians to be historically significant comes from the Bible. And as much as Vodi or others like to talk about corroboration, repeated tales within the same holy book don't add to the likelihood that those stories really happened, even if that book draws on different authors within the same movement. This should be especially evident when stories are repeated nearly verbatim, such as we see in the Synoptic Gospels, which is indication not of reliability, but of simple copying. So when apologists refer to different New Testament books as separate witnesses to Christ's life, while failing to mention that all these varying witnesses are out of the Bible, they are being willfully coy, because they know that using the Bible to prove the Bible is obvious foolishness. Thus one reason nobody's tearing down the walls in college because they're reading Caesar is because contemporary accounts of his life are varied and reliable, while the closest thing we have to direct contemporary accounts of Jesus are all from within a religious text. But there's an even more fundamental reason, which is that universities take a sober historical approach to Caesar, maintaining a realistically tentative idea of who he was and what he means to us today. We know that there was almost certainly a Roman ruler by that name, and we can surmise with varying levels of certainty that he possessed certain traits and did certain things. But we also know that we cannot be 100% certain about everything that was written about him, and we treat writings with elements of propaganda or mythicism as near-certain fictions. So if a writing claimed that Caesar healed the sick or rose from the dead, then nobody, Vodi included, would believe it, and no number of manuscripts would do anything to budge us from our well-founded understanding that these stories were stupid. In addition, we know that our idea of what kind of person Caesar was is going to be pretty fuzzy and open to interpretation. This is just how history works. Historians never indiscriminately take everything a historical document says at face value. That in mind, let's grant Vodi's wild assumption that evidence for Jesus is stronger than evidence for Caesar and see where he wants us to go with it. Let's just say that the New Testament really does have more manuscripts than any other historical record many times over. Forgetting that most of these documents were mass-produced centuries after the fact, and were similar to each other only because the church was fastidious about making sure that their scribes faithfully reproduced the version of the New Testament that had become official around the 4th century. Let's ignore all that and assume, like Vodi says, that the Bible is just the most god motherfucking reliable document that has ever been produced in history. And in light of that, let's compare what we do with writings about Caesar to what Vodi wants us to do with writings about Jesus. He wants us to not only surmise that these documents are reliable, but to take them at absolute face value. He doesn't want us to merely accept that there was likely a teacher named Jesus and that he may have done some of the things attributed to him in the Bible, tempering our expectation of what we can know about him by taking into account biblical authors' cultural biases or agendas. No. We're supposed to believe that Jesus spoke every word attributed to him, that he performed every miracle attributed to him, that he was born of a god virgin and raised himself from the god dead. On top of all that, Fodi suggests that we should be so certain about the truth of these claims that we should live our lives according to what these documents say Christ teaches. But this, pardon my bleeped out French, is dumb as f***. And by insinuating this, Fodi is ignoring what we expect from historical documents and what we do with them. Historians never accept historical documents as being totally accurate. They try to dig as close as they can to the source, and they're constantly revising their tentative conclusions as new evidence arises. We expect historical sources to have error, and we tend to take them with a grain of salt when a nationalistic or religious motivation is thrown into the mix. Rather than straight sources of truth, historical records are tools for understanding various times and people. And while things like textual veracity, corroboration, and closeness to the source can lead us to believe a document is reasonably reliable, none of these factors will ever lead us to believe a document is perfectly true. This is especially the case if we see a document make supernatural or otherwise outrageous claims. As much as people accept the existence and reign of Caesar, we don't accept the numerous divine or miraculous claims about him for the same reasons we don't accept divine or miraculous claims about Jesus. So when Christians claim that biblical documents are so reliable that we should take every word as absolutely inerrant, to the extent of seriously considering tales of the supernatural found within them, they are far overreaching what any realistic scholarship is going to include about any other sort of document. We have a tentative and evolving understanding of Caesar, and we are okay with that because we're not invested in him as a potential God character, and we don't shape our behaviors based on the specifics of what he did with his life. If Christians legitimately want to play the history game, they can do the same thing with Jesus. 
take a soberly cautious historical view of the Jesus figure, being open to the various possibilities of who he was or wasn't, and how the backgrounds and biases of biblical authors may have affected what they wrote about him. This I can accept, and this is already done by legitimate historians. The problem is, apologists want different consideration given to their documents. They want them treated as absolute truth, and all this talk about historical reliability is just window dressing meant to make congregations feel smarter about blind faith in Scripture. Even setting aside how little we know about Christ and how much we know about Caesar, because Vody grossly misrepresents both, the fact of the matter is that what he wants us to do with the Bible is absolute nonsense. No number of documents, no closeness to the claimed events, justifies making the jump from critical academic study of a historic figure to fundamentalist reading of a holy text. And when we see that this is what Vody is trying to slip past us, it becomes clear this is just a giant sham predicated on a fast talker's calculated misrepresentation of how history works. Thank you.